Hi everybody, Dustin here from Gold Rat High Bankers. Just wanted to shoot a little video talking about the different spray bar options you have with the Outback Pioneer Series High Bankers. Now this is a 12 inch unit which flares out to 20 inches at the top roundabouts. So about 50 centimeters across. Um, we have crossbar option here which you can see it's already slotted for you or we have the wrap around options and this bar is actually detachable to accommodate that now these little slots here these are for your cable ties to hold on to the bar if you're going to run around the outside so we'll go and have a look at the different kinds of spray bars and how to set them up and then We'll come back and we'll and we'll fit them. Go from there. So to start with, we have our poly pipe. Stuff's really cost effective. You can find it absolutely any irrigation supplies, plumbing supplies, hardwares. Uh, it's the type of stuff when you're going to run water through a backyard and you're going to throw dirt over it, it's got great crush resistance, um, you, know, you, can, you can bend the stuff and it lasts for ages. The length of this 3 meters is about $16 um, and so for a uh, 12 inch high banker like that where you want 50 centimeter bars across the top you're going to get 6 full bars out of that one piece so less than three bucks a bar it's pretty good in my books then your other options are called a poly riser come in three sizes generally if you get into an irrigation store you can get them even longer so you've got 30 centimeters 37 and uh, and 45 they're about 350, 390, and about four bucks fifty. So still pretty cheap. A 25 mil fitting. Benefit of that is you can run a tap straight off the end. Another benefit to this um, poly riser, everything being 25 mil, you can get yourself a nice close off valve like this I like to use these on um, trommels actually allows you to divert water around and adjust to the different spray bars so in the last trommel I ran three spray bars can open this out a little bit let, let more flow through but again with the with the riser the only real difference is rather than it going straight in still takes the same poly fitting it's going to have to you're gonna to have to twist it in a little bit to get it right in there. It's not designed for this pipe, but it works. And once it's in there, it's rock solid. If you get this covered in sand, this fitting, these poly risers, they can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get off. You have to twist them all the way out, pull this out. See how that's locked in on the thread? and then you'll have to disconnect it like that okay so if you're wanting to run off one side of your spray bars so you can do a clean up put a little length of hose two feet of hose and a little trigger you can pull your mat put your bucket in give it a spray down so that's a pretty cool feature of the poly riser it's a little bit thinner than the poly pipe. Poly pipe's 32 mil. This stuff's 25. So on the uh, bigger high bankers, be better to get large spray, a bit more water in there. But this stuff's really quite heavy duty, pretty resilient. It will crack easier than this stuff. This stuff you can toss around, walk on it. You know, I've had this one here. This lasts about two years being hammered in the snow in Ballarat in the rain out in the sun all day 
you know, it copped an absolute hiding and one day dropped the shovel down a little bit too hard on top when I was a bit knackered. Split, but got a bit of tape out, kept the going for that day, and then retired it. I like this stuff because it's cheap, it's very easy to drill, and it has, um, hopefully you can see that, it actually has lines already marked in there. I like to use those as my guide on where to cut. So basically cutting from there to there, if I don't cut in on this side, I go a little bit over that side, over its position. However, the first cut goes in, that's what I use as my gauge. And people ask me all the time, how many slots should I cut? There's no answer to that, I'm afraid. Depending on your pump, your setup, how much water you want, how much pressure you want, you're going to have to cut, you know, start off an inch and a half or two inches apart and then come back and cut in between as you need more pressure. Um, so setting one of these up is pretty straightforward. So you know, I've cut a piece off with a hacksaw, 50 mil. Alright, so here's what you need. Depending on the length, cut to length. We need a 17 to 32 mil clamp. I like it nice and tight. Gives you a little bit of extra purchase. And then what do I do? Take a hacksaw. Cut some relief lines in there so you can get a bit more bite down. You can just use a standard plug for one of these like, uh, like what I've used here. Just blank it off. Or you can go one with a little relief valve. So if you get any gunk, blockages, and you need to open that up without turning your pump off, and grab your shifter, open that up. Blast all the crap out, and off you go. Tighten that up. Don't use a screwdriver. Even though these things have a little slot in them, they really don't like being tightened with a screwdriver. They always end up damaged some, for some reason. Okay, real simple. Now these are the elbows that we use, these are a Filmac. They will last you absolutely forever. Here's one that I've been using for four years. Same one, I've never had to replace one. Cop an absolute hiding and they will last forever and they have really good purchase on here to tighten those threads up so we're loosening this off share my poly in put an elbow on there and if we want to keep it at 32 we get a 32 camera simple female f-type Searching for these on eBay or something, it's an F type cam lock 32mm. You can get them as cheap as $3.50, as expensive as $30, depending on machine quality, country of origin, stainless steel, aluminium, poly. Uh, we'll try and get some, source some cheap poly ones and we'll get them up on the website. I personally run 50mm hose. So, I run one of these adapters, that's actually a 40 on there, but I flange it out, you flange out 50, and I recommend, spend a little bit of money on these, just to have in your kit, when you can. You don't need it straight away, but it's just great 
to have a few bits and pieces to be able to go from 40 to 32 and 32 to 50 and vice versa and then if something goes wrong with your pump or you're heading out with a mate and he's got a big pump and you want to tee off and two of you use the same pump it doesn't hurt to have these bits and pieces around always gives you more options as I run 50 mil hose this is actually how I run my setup one and a quarter to 40 40 to 50 F type 50 cam lock that's pretty much how I run all the time when I go down to 40 it's real easy take that off Run a 40 away you go so I always keep a few bits and pieces like this with me okay so that's basically how I would set that up now I'll show you quickly how we put slots in these alright so I've just taken my new spray bar and fitted it to the high banker so it hangs around there nice quick solid and very quick and easy to remove fitting now with this hopper the idea is it's, it's open and, it's, and flared out the top so you can throw more material in and you can actually dump your buckets here sit them on top let that material feed as it's chewed and then it works its way down so we don't actually need spray on the sides here we can allow a little bit but the idea really is to spray inside that that 12 inches so all we really need to do is mark inside the texture bit of a rough idea and now we'll go and cut some slots Okay, now for these slots, I'm just going to bang one in every, roughly every half inch. Right. I'm just going to use them a little cold saw here. eyes and ear protection see how we have those blue marks I'm going to shoot to just cut into each of those Alright, now, it's not going to look pretty, it's going to be all bird inside, it's going to be a little flat, there's plastic in there, you've got another pipe you can jam in and give it a bit of a clean out, that's fine, but basically, what we need is a torch. Up a bit. That's cool. Oh, you can see.
see. See how those holes open up, they round out, they harden, they become a lot stronger. There's a couple there I can see that still a little bit in there. I'll get a ruler or something in there, poke a little hole. Basically, that's going to allow that smooth edge, that's going to allow an outward spray. It's going to allow a lot of pressure. It's not going to crack because it doesn't have a stress point there because it's, it's now rounded. And that's that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. I'd do exactly the same thing if I was making out of poly pipe. Here's an example where I didn't heat it up and didn't burn it. And what you've got is a lot of crap and junk getting stuck there. I think I used this spray bar once on that one time and realised I'd butchered it, never used it again. But you can come up with a whole lot of different configurations. This kind of stuff, little holes, it's going to get blocked with grass. But if you're really, really clean and you, and you like that, that's fine. I find the little pin lasers is nice when you've got you know, lots of sand and you just kind of want to make it soup. This is just dumping a lot of water, doesn't have a lot of pressure and obviously my preferred slices like that. But that's how it's done, not too complicated. Buddy. Have a look at that box. Thank you, beauty. Eat. Okay, now moving on to. PVC. Some of you guys love your PVC. And I'm not going to go into details on how to cut all this sort of stuff. It's pretty straightforward. But I'll show you with the with the uh, eye banker. When you remove this top panel off the hopper which is to accommodate this. This becomes your stencil. So when we get our main lengths, we know the width of our hopper in there. Get our T piece where we want it to be. With these pieces obviously you push it in, mark it up, then you know how much thread you've got. So you can line these pieces up. And you cut your pieces and stick them together. It's not rocket science. Cheap and easy alternative is just to bang an end cap on these. Problem I found with these big tubes, they don't have a lot of pressure. They do like to block up with grass, that's why I don't use them myself. But Clear these out, you can save yourself a bit of pain just by buying a threaded end cap. Put on a threaded end cap, look for the fill mac part, and then there you've got a removable, clearable spray bar. So you don't have to turn your pump off and shut down, you start losing pressure, just pull it out, get a bit of a spray, force it back on, keep going. And you do that on both sides, no reason not to. do recommend when you're teeing off get yourself an elbow so that you can send the direction to where your hose is don't be limited by you know gluing everything together and being stuck you know you really want to be able to 
direction this to where your hose and where your pumps best pick up and where you can set up on the day. Fitting PVC spray bars. So, under your hopper, three bolts. So we've refitted the top of the panel, put that underneath, now we have a nice anchor point for the hopper, okay, it means you get, when you go to reach for your hopper, you're not going to grab the pipe, you're not going to put stress on that elbow. touch quickly on cable ties. This is a cable tie and this is a cable tie. Oop. This is about three bucks a packet for uh, maybe 40. These are about twenty dollars a packet. These won't crack in the cold. They won't shatter. They will hold up beating. These will crack on a cold day if it's too cold or if you look at them wrong. So I'm going to use these just as an example but I recommend spending a little bit of money getting some good cable ties because you want that thing to stay on you don't want it flying off and spraying you with water at the wrong time. So over here we have some slots I'd use at least three on each side. I'm just going to scratch the center on that side. And we're done. Now, because when we designed this, we really thought about this. One of the biggest problems people have is having to glue everything together and then things being blown apart. We've designed this to support all of these points. So if you clamp this down enough, with good cable ties, there's no reason with pressure that this should blow off. It's got one, two, three, four slots, and then number five we've got in the middle there. So essentially you could have five cable ties on each side. There's no real reason for that to blow off. It's up to you if you want to glue everything together. But you don't need to in this situation. Now we take this, 
divert our water down, we're off. Nice and simple. So now when we're lifting up our hopper, we're not putting the pressure on this. We're using a ramp. Now this is another poly option that some blokes like to use. You run your sprays and you have, have a jet to pump straight out the front here. Now I actually use this setup on one of my little high bankers and I call it a pooling spray bar because what it does is it just dumps water here. It's not much good for clays and things like that but if you've got some concentrates that you want to run at home and you just want to make sure you've got enough water in here to keep the material running through, this can work really well. Up, a few questions you guys had. When designing the Outback Pioneer series, we really tried to accommodate everybody's different style. And you hear this argument in Facebook and in the, in all the Facebook groups and and prospecting Australia and all the other forums, Golden Gems, people arguing about what's the best spray bar setup. I personally think there's no best setup. Whatever you like based on your style is going to work best for you. So don't be limited by, you know, what fittings and things are supposed to fit. Make it work for you and um, enjoy your high banking.